pushing drivers to go beyond their maximum allowable hours, pushing them to go beyond the speed limit in order to make runs, that is profit for those companies. Do you know what to do if you're injured in a collision with a commercial vehicle? Well, that's what we're going to ask the lawyer today. Hi again, everybody. I'm Rob Rosenthal with AskTheLawyers.com. My guest is attorney Tad Thomas with the Thomas Law Offices in Kentucky. Tad, thank you for making some time to help us out today. Thanks for having me again, Rob. So isn't a case a, a collision with a commercial vehicle the same as any other uh, motor vehicle collision? No, actually, they're very different. Uh, you know, cases involving commercial motor vehicles have all sorts of federal and state requirements on drivers that you don't have on a normal motor vehicle case. Uh, for instance, the Federal Motor Carrier Regulations is a book, you know, yay thick. And an attorney who handles these cases needs to be very familiar with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations. And uh, so if somebody's just familiar with handling regular uh, motor vehicle uh, injury cases, they might not necessarily be the best one for this kind of case, right? Sure. You know, there's a lot of attorneys that just handle regular car accidents. Right. Those that aren't specialists in trucking litigation, they're going to miss a lot. They're not going to know about the federal regulations for documentation, the hours of service requirements, the standards of care for driving that commercial motor vehicle drivers have that a regular car car driver would not. Let's talk about some of those federal regulations, Tad. How how common in your experience is it that, that those rules and regulations aren't met? Uh, it's very common. In fact, I think every case I've ever had involving a commercial motor vehicle has had some violation in it, some obviously worse than others. Mm -hmm. Whether it's hour of service violations, failure to maintain the tractor trailer, uh, excessive speeds, giving the conditions, there's always some violation of the federal regulations. Tell me what the Federal Coercion Act uh, rule is. What does that mean? It's a great question, Rob. You know, the federal, uh, federal regulators realized that a lot of the violations of these regulations came at the request of the owners, not just the drivers. What was happening was owners were saying, hey, uh, I need you to drive from A to B. And they knew at the time that there were going to be violations of regulations or speed laws mm. uh, involved in, in making that trip. So they wanted to enable drivers to have a way to report this misconduct without fear of consequence. So the federal coercion, coercion rule, excuse me, was enacted back in 2016, and it gives drivers an anonymous way to report these violations by the companies. They have to be done in 90 days, uh, but the federal regulators can take this information, do an investigation, and then cite the violators. And what are some of the, uh, the what, what are the reasons that uh, companies would coerce their drivers to break some of these rules? They want to make more runs in less time. They know that more runs means more money. Mm. Uh, and so pushing drivers to go beyond their maximum allowable hours, pushing them to go beyond the speed limit in order to make runs, that is profit for those companies. And so they're pushing these drivers to violate federal and state laws in order to profit the the log books and that sort of thing these days, Tad, that's it's electronic and computerized. Does that mean that's done away with any of that uh, where, where those are falsified? Unfortunately, no. What we're seeing is, is the companies are figuring out ways to get around them. Some companies, uh, especially some of the large, really professional companies, do a very good job of you know making sure that there's no circumvention. But unfortunately, more often than not, we are seeing, even in spite of computerized logs, we're seeing violations. Does that make your job more difficult when was, I'm injured in an accident with an 18-wheeler and I, and I come to you? Does it make it more difficult for you to figure out if there has been negligence or not? Yes, absolutely. Because what we've seen is it, they get more creative in circumventing the law. So we have to get more creative in how we find out if they're circumventing the law. And an attorney, that's one of the reasons why it's far different to handle this type of case than just a regular car wreck case, because you need an attorney who's experienced in really digging in 
to all those computer logs, understanding what types of computers and data recorders are out there so that you know the right questions to ask to get to the bottom of whether or not there were violations of these laws. If I'm in an accident and injured with another uh, vehicle, just a passenger vehicle, Tad, there's probably the other person's not going to get on the phone with their attorney right away. But if I'm in an accident with an 18 wheeler, I can be pretty much assured they're going to have somebody right away working on their case. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what we found is the lawyers that represent these trucking companies have specialized teams that go out, especially in the event of a serious, like a fatal accident or a serious catastrophic injury. They have teams that are on call to go out on a moment's notice and they're out there with their lawyers. They're out there with their investigators and they're out there with their experts like accident reconstructionists. So they get to the scene well before we do. Those of us that represent families of people that are killed and injured in these collisions, it's going to be hours or at best, but most likely days before we're contacted. And so we have to jump out as soon as we can to get our investigators and our experts out to the scene as well. But rest assured that these trucking companies have specialized teams that are investigating these cases to try to uh, reduce their liability and eliminate our clients' rights well before we're ever called. Is it possible if I delay in contacting someone like you, Tad, that evidence could somehow disappear? Absolutely. You know, think of the evidence on a roadway. It's very important to see, okay, if a bumper is knocked off, if there are tire marks on the roadway, gouge marks on the roadway, over time, these are eroded, weather or traffic, things like that make the evidence disappear. People go out to the scene and clean it up and, and pick up things that may be very important evidence. There's often video involved. I had a case a couple of years ago where a car was docked off the side of a bridge into the Ohio River. And we had video showing that vehicle going off mm. the side of the road that was obtained from a security camera at a bar that just happened to wow. be facing uh, that direction. So it's important to get someone out right away to find out where are those cameras and make sure those businesses provide that video or at least preserve it so that you can get it later. And in some of these cases we're talking about could be you know, catastrophic injuries or, or death. Uh, life is turned upside down. What if I'm thinking on top of that, how can I afford uh, an attorney to help me? Well, any lawyer uh, that's uh, worth his salt or her salt that handles these cases will work on what's called a contingent fee basis, meaning they only get paid a fee if they're successful in litigating the case. They will also advance all of the expenses in the case, the cost for those investigators, the cost for those experts, filing fees, deposition charges. The attorneys who handle these cases often that are really good at these will front all of those expenses and will only ask for those expenses back if they're successful in litigating the case. So cost should be no object in pursuing these cases. And so the victim can focus on getting well. That's always the most important thing. I tell all of my clients, try to put as much on me as possible your only uh, job in this case is to get well, to heal physically and emotionally. Don't worry about the legal process. Hand that over to us. That's why you hired us. Tad, thank you so much. Lots of great info. Thanks for helping us out today. Rob, thanks for having me again. That's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been attorney Tad Thomas of Kentucky. If you want the best information or you're ready to choose a lawyer that lawyers choose, make sure to go to askthelawyers.com. Also, please take a sec to like, share, and subscribe by clicking on the button below. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Rob Rosenthal with askthelawyers.com.